In this video, I want to bring together the two strands of what we've learnt in this week's videos. The two strands are frequentist inference and empirical distributions. Let's remind ourselves what they're about. Frequentist inference says that the data we happen to see in our reality can be misleading because of noise. And what we should do is look across the whole multiverse and think of all the parallel universes, each with its own version of the data set and its own data scientist, and see what estimates all those parallel data scientists made. To do this, we need to somehow simulate the multiverse. In other words, we need to be able to generate synthetic data sets, data sets that reflect what might have happened but didn't. In the last two videos, the simulation strategy we used was simple. We propose a probability model, we fit its parameters, and then we just generate a data set by sampling values from the fitted probability model. But there's a viewpoint that says it's daft to fit probability models. When we looked at empirical distributions, we came to the conclusion that there's no need to do any work at all to fit a distribution. We can get a perfect fit just by using the empirical distribution. The slogan is, a data set is a distribution. If we want to generate new values from the distribution behind the data, we can just pick values at random from the data set itself. Let's see what happens when we bring these two ideas together. Let's start with a simple confidence interval. This question presents us with a data set consisting of readings from two groups and asks us to find a confidence interval for the difference between the means from the two groups. Here's the code. It's the usual three-step procedure for finding confidence intervals. Steps one and three are exactly the same as before. What's different is step two, generating a synthetic data set. What this code does to create a synthetic copy of the X data set is it just samples from the empirical distribution of x. This is the best possible fitted distribution for x, and likewise from y. This is called non-parametric resampling, for the obvious reason that it doesn't need any parameters to be estimated. I love this sort of code. It's just a handful of lines, but to understand the thinking behind it, we need so much work, so much careful thought about what exactly we're trying to answer. OK, that's non-parametric confidence intervals. Next, let's look at non-parametric resampling for hypothesis tests. Same data set, but now we're asked to test whether the two groups have the same distribution. Here's the code. Again, steps one and three are exactly what we did before in the last video about Fisher's procedure for hypothesis testing. The only difference is step two. For step two, we have to generate a synthetic data set under the assumption that H0 is true. So let's think, first of all, what is H0 for this question? The question tells us, test whether the two groups have the same distribution. In other words, it's asking us to test the null hypothesis that there's a common distribution from which X and Y are both sampled. And what's the empirical way to get a perfect fit for that common distribution? Pause the video, see if you can work it out. It's simple. If all the values, all the x and y, come from a common distribution, then the best possible fit is the empirical distribution of all of those values. So now it's easy to see how to generate a synthetic data set under the assumption that H0 is true. If H0 is true, then both X and Y are drawn from that common distribution. And that's exactly what this code does. All of this probably looks too good to be true. I warned you earlier about parametric resampling, and the same warning applies to non-parametric resampling. Any method for simulating the multiverse is a leap of faith. It has to be. How could we possibly deduce what might have happened when all we know is what did happen? There aren't any mathematical guarantees about the validity of these procedures. The only way to give a guarantee would be if we knew the correct model for what truly is going on in the multiverse. Mathematicians are welcome to assume that if they want, but data scientists should know better. They know every model is wrong. 
So in practice, you think about the problem you're trying to solve and you ask yourself if your resampling strategy is reasonable. Or you give up and you convert to Bayesianism, but then you also have a problem which is just as intractable of where on earth your prior beliefs are meant to come from. The only answer is, there is no formulaic answer. What we're doing here is inductive reasoning. We're trying to go from particular observations, all the swans I have seen are white, to a general rule, all swans are white. And there's no way that this sort of inductive reasoning can be shoehorned into a formulaic deductive procedure. One extra topic that we don't have time to cover in this course is validation and holdout sets. In machine learning, validation on a holdout set is seen as the gold standard for choosing between models. It's really interesting to scrutinize it more closely and put it side by side with Bayesian and frequentist induction. As I said, there isn't time to go into it in this course, so all I'll say is I'll make two points. First, holdout validation is based on the idea that a sample of holdout values is representative of the distribution of future unseen data. In other words, it's fundamentally based on empirical distributions and non-parametric sampling. Second, holdout validation isn't a silver bullet. It's not a procedure you can apply without thinking and get meaningful answers. It's a form of inductive reasoning, and it takes very careful thinking to understand the epistemology behind the claims it makes. If you want to read more, you'll be able to find it in the extended lecture notes for this course.